Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part four of my Star Wars Episode 7 BB-8 style droid. So I started building this long before we saw the real BB-8 at Star Wars Celebration at Anaheim. So I've built this as a ball balancing robot and I'm aware this isn't how the real one works, but I'm gonna finish this project before I start thinking about version two. So what I've got here is a robot with omnidirectional wheels and some accelerometers and gyros and an Arduino which balances on the ball actively by trying to stay on top of it. Last time I had a go at making it radio controlled, which works relatively well, but this time we're gonna get the ball painted up like BB-8 and we're gonna stick the features on the head and try and color those panels and basically do all the cosmetic stuff. Here's my CAD for the large eye on BB-8, which is this part on the left, and it seems to have a kind of feature on the inside and um, this skirt with a kind of sun visor thing over the top. So I think that I've made that roughly the right size. Um, so we'll get those printed. On the right hand side is another rather interesting thing here, which um, basically is a, a sort of plug with a skirt. Um, and this is to form a lens for the eye. So what we're going to do is form some clear PET over that by heating it with a hot air gun and then basically stretching it over the dome piece by pushing the skirt down over it. So it's a bit like vacuum forming, only we don't actually need a vacuum because there's no um, sort of undercuts or indents in the top, it's perfectly smooth. So we can just heat that plastic and stretch it over by pushing the skirt over from the top. Um, obviously we're gonna 3D print the um, plug there to get the right contour, and we'll probably have to sand off some of the build lines on it to make it perfectly smooth before we do the form. This is the smaller of the eye, or whatever it turns out to be on BB-8, and um, that's got a kind of skirt around it I'm going to print as well. And similarly, we're going to use this plug in the middle, which I'll just sink down there, to form a um, clear sort of lens. And I think I might leave the black plug in there because it's basically, um, you can't see inside, there's no feature inside this part. So we're just gonna use the outside of this piece to um, again form a piece of PET down that will heat up, heat up. So let's get those parts printed. We're gonna print them all on the Lulzbot Mini and then we'll see what we've got. So here are the parts, I'm quite happy with this one which is the big eye piece and we've got those details around the bottom as well there. And this piece will go inside behind the dome. Um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to fit but obviously the dome contour is on the inside so that'll be slightly further forward, it might get mounted on a block of something. And then we've got our sort of skirt and our plug here so we'll heat up some PET and sort of tape it to this and squash it through there to make the lens shape. And of course that lens shape will come out exactly the same size, which I think is about right. So I need to first of all come and uh, sand some bits and pieces off this to make it smooth so that doesn't come through into the lens press. Right, so I've sanded this and brushed a bit of acetone on to make it smooth on the whole. And I've got a piece of PET here, which I got from Mindset Online in the UK, and this is 0.4 millimeter, so just under half a millimeter PET sheet. It comes in much bigger sheets, and I've got some other uses for this in other projects. So I'm going to tape this to the skirt piece, heat up the middle with a hot air gun, and push it over there and hopefully form the same shape. So that's attempt one. Uh, not terribly successful. Perhaps it wasn't hot enough, so we'll try that again. So that's attempt two, it's a bit wrinkled on here, but actually right around the edge there is smooth enough we can trim it and use it. It actually melted the um, 
ABS part as well, that's how hot I had to get it, so it'd be better if this was wood. And hopefully, I can get this off here and it's not permanently stuck. Alright, I got it out, so um, that's not looking too bad. We'll trim around the edge and we'll hopefully find that fits nicely in there to make the dome. I've just trimmed that up with scissors and there we can see the new eye and um, I think I'm going to have to airbrush that with a black, bit of black acrylic from the inside because it should be slightly smoked. It's not perfect, um, but it will do. So the smaller eyepiece is done, which has come out okay, and that's the knob that goes in the middle, and again I'm going to form PET hopefully just by heating it this time and squashing it in there, and this is um, a, basically a tube in the middle which doesn't taper like the outside, so there's a hole in the bottom is the same size as the one in the top, so that should work quite well, um, I think. Well, that hasn't worked well at all, probably because I didn't um, sort of constrain the edges like I did last time. So um, that's not that great. So I think what I'm going to do is just sort of gloss this up with paint and just leave that in the end. Because that's pretty much what it looks like anyway. So let's just offer these parts up. I think they look about right. Something like that. And what we're going to do for this dome, so I could paint this white and try and hand paint all the details on. Um, probably painting it from the inside would be the best thing. What I'm in fact going to do is make an outer shell which I'm going to cut sections from, paint them separately and stick them back on all over. I'd like to retain some of the uh, transparency here perhaps so we can see inside and see the wheels as a bit of a demo unit. So I do quite like the clear dome, uh, but we really do need to give it the appearance of BB-8. So to do that, I'm actually going to vacuum form over this dome and then cut sections out of the vacuum form to make all of the panels. So this is my vacuum forming setup. If you would like to know more information, have a look at xrobots.co.uk slash vacuum where you can get, um, there's basically links to two detailed videos and photos of the whole thing. But very simply, I've got a box with a heater in the bottom, and this is an infrared heater which only heats what it shines light on. The box is lined with foil which diffuses the heat, and basically we place the plastic in a frame on top, which is one and a half mil white hips, which is styrene sheet. And that heats it up for about three and a half minutes, and then I have a table full of holes which we put the mould on, which in this case is this dome. And we suck air through with a Dyson vacuum cleaner, which is more than strong enough. And that makes the form. So let's get that powered up and we'll see how well it works. Hopefully there's enough stretch to get all over that dome. So nearly up to a minute and we can see that's going quite soft. Um, the last time I did this it was slightly thicker, it was two mil. And it took about three and a half minutes. So we'll probably give this three minutes and then we'll form it down. So that has formed up okay. It's not quite as tight as I'd have liked all the way around the edge, but uh, let's remove that and we'll see what it looks like. Well, here it is um, out of the frame and the acrylic dome is still in here and you can see there is still a slight gap around the edge of that one, especially there for some reason. So far I can't actually get the dome out because it's sucked down so well. So um, basically I've trimmed this at the bottom here to get rid of that lip where it wasn't um, quite tight in the corner. And thinking about it, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull a form down really tight in this plastic. I haven't got any thicker sheets unfortunately. 
Obviously a slightly thicker sheet, um, previously I was using 2mm, has a lot more stretch in it because it's thicker and it also retains the heat a lot more as it's being formed. So um, I formed in 1mm before with relative success and this is 1.5mm. So I think that's probably the best I'm going to get. So for now I'm going to work with it and what I'm going to do is stick an additional flat strip around here with those features which are basically silver and orange pieces and then we're going to cut directly onto this dome once we've marked it, paint individual pieces and put them back on again so they've got a kind of edge. So let's just put that eye back on again. I think it's looking quite a lot like BB-8 but we just need some orange and grey sections. We need to find the middle of the dome so I'm currently crouching in the corner here and uh, what I've done is cut a piece of card which is basically half of the diameter so it's the radius of um, this circle but also taking into account the skirting board which is another 19mm thick. So now if I put this here and I put this here we get that at the right height we should find that that hopefully the middle. Using that mark there I've actually made a hole in it and I've used these bits of plastic with a spiky thing stuck through like so and I've just put a pen into the other holes to mark out roughly where I think these bands should be. The plan is going to be to cut these out, go and paint them up and then stick them back on again and I've just placed the two eye pieces on here with masking tape to try and work it out where they should be. I started to mark the ball out as well and I've done that just by drawing around the head dome which looks about the right size in the photos I can find. A smaller CCTV dome for that middle one and then I've just basically made a card template to draw all of those wedges and I've done the entire thing by eye. So I'm going to be painting these up, um, there's a few more features which are slightly different in the middle of these and we're going to paint that with some acrylic paint mixed with liquid latex. And if you remember from part one, this whole ball is coated with liquid latex with some white pigment in, uh, which was kind of brushed on. It's got a bit pink actually, um, but that's not too bad. We're going to weather it up and um, do a bit of airbrushing and shading, so I think that's going to be fine uh, for this project. So I gave in and painted the dome white from the inside, so now the entire acrylic dome is white. And I've started cutting these sections out, which I've painted up from the vacuum form and those are going to sit on there, so obviously we've got one here that the eye sits on which will be glued on and then that goes roughly there, so we've got a few of those things an orange piece that needs to be painted up and various others that are going to be stuck on just to give it that detail getting there Just painting on here with some liquid latex and some acrylic paint mixed together and trying very hard not to go over the lines. Here it is, I'm pretty sure that looks like BB-8. I've just painted up some random details on the ball for now and that's probably going to be uh, all that I do. Let's just have a closer look at that head. So I've basically stuck random panels on pretty much. I haven't got a, any good reference photos from all the way around BB-8. Um, but that's not too bad, all of these features are basically stuck on bits of styrene. So the head is a lot whiter than the rest of the ball, so... I think what I'm going to have to do is tone that down a bit with a bit of weathering but not too much, just dirty it up a bit. Um, the one on the stage at Anaheim looked quite dirty anyway. That'll also help highlight some of the edges and uh, basically give the whole thing a bit of a better appearance. This is all that's left of my vacuum form. So that's the vacuum form we did over the dome. I've cut all the panels out to stick them onto the acrylic dome. So there we go, I'll keep that if in case I need to add any more bits and pieces to it.
So I've probably overdone it slightly, but it's quite hard to get rid of the bright white uh, without overdoing the dirt, and I've done a little bit of dirt on the uh, ball there. Assuming this thing's been rolling through the desert, of course, it's probably going to get filthy. So there we go, so a bit of shading. I've also um, gone and halfway through airbrushing it, gone and taken a sanding pad and sanded some back so that it's much, much dirtier, sort of around the corners and things, which is probably where dirt would accumulate. So nicely weathered, more weathered like um, an X-Wing or something that's in battle would have been, but there we go anyway. So not too unhappy with that, let's see how it works. The droid is still just about radio controlled, although I haven't made uh, much progress on controlling it from last time, but here we go, so I can um, give it a short shove forward, so hopefully you can see its head dip a bit and it drives vaguely forwards. Um, let's go to its right, just a little bit, there we go, it's a little bit more under control, just about away. So in terms of improvements, uh, we could do several things, including a faster processor, perhaps so you could process and calculate the maths faster, have a look back at the code in the previous episodes to see how it works. There's quite a lot of maths going on there to filter the sensors um, and also decide what to do with the motors. The other thing is we're just using DC motors that um, we can drive more or less current into them to try and stop and go and go in the right direction at the right speed to try and sort of correct the error to balance all the time. Uh, we could use something like stepper motors or we could put wheel encoders on so we can actually correct a specific angle instead of just trying to drive current. And then we could use that error, uh, reading from the inertial measurement unit again, to decide whether we can improve on that in the future so it essentially learns. So um, this isn't too bad, I'm not too unhappy. It's basically been built in the most simple way possible, just with DC motors, an inertial measurement unit and a 16 megahertz Arduino. So. Um, from the look of the comments in the previous episodes, most people who know are surprised it actually works at all. So there we go. Um, I may well build another version that works in an entirely different way, but I haven't quite decided yet. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on this project and other projects. Also take a look at my social media pages. The links are in the description to this video.